One of the annoying things about working with GitHub is that whenever I'm doing any of my regular Git stuff, so checking my status, checking my log, making commits, things like this, I can do all of it from my terminal. But the second that I want to do anything more than pulling or pushing from a repo with GitHub, I have to go to their website or I guess I can use their like GUI thing. I don't want to use their GUI thing. I'd much rather do it through their website. But what if there was a way to do it directly in your terminal? And that's what we're going to be looking at today. So recently GitHub decided to open up a beta for a new tool. This is GitHub CLI. Not to be confused with Hub, which is the unofficial GitHub CLI tool that's actually on the GitHub GitHub page. This one is on CLI slash CLI. Anyway, that's, there's probably some history there for why the unofficial tool is on this page. But anyway, that's not what we're looking into today. So I've been testing out GitHub CLI and honestly, I think it is a really, really good tool. So if you want to install it, the first thing you're going to want to do is we look on the GitHub page itself, there's a bunch of installation instructions. So if you're on macOS, you can get it with Homebrew or Mac ports. If you're on Windows, you can get it through Scoop or Chocolatey, or you can download the MSI file. And if you're on various types of Linux, there are various ways to install it. Me being on Arch Linux, I'm going to install it from the AUR. You can install the package manually, but I'm just gonna do it through yay. So yay-s github-cli. Now the tool itself isn't actually called GitHub CLI when you're using it. The tool itself is called GH. So just make sure you remember that. Now GH doesn't have a man page, which is a little bit annoying, but all of the commands are actually documented pretty well with help pages. So it's not a big deal that there's no man page. I would like to see a man page added in a later version, but as you saw, this is a beta piece of software, so I imagine that can be just added in a later version. And I'll bring up the manual, which we're probably not going to look at, because the help pages are actually really, really useful. Basically, the help pages are what is in this manual, so you really don't need the, uh, the graphical view of it in your web browser. You can do all of that just by looking at the actual help pages. Now, before we actually get to testing it out, there is one thing I would really recommend doing, and I'm really surprised that this is here. So if we run gh completion, and then just run the help option, we can see what we can do with that. Now, what gh completion is gonna do is generate a bash completion script or a zsh completion script, so you can actually automatically complete stuff as you're writing it. I don't know why it doesn't install this when you actually install the application, but it is nice to have a way to actually install completion like this. So if we were to run this with the dash s option, and then give it zsh, as you can see, it'll output a big script. So basically what you're going to want to do in your bash profile, your Z profile, anything like that is actually put this line in right here. So eval gh completion dash s and then whatever shell you're using. If you're on Windows, you can also do it for PowerShell. If you're on macOS, I think macOS defaults to zsh now. I could be wrong there. I'm pretty sure it's zsh. Now a completion script will basically let you do things like this. So gh and then if I press tab, it'll let me complete that. And if I press tab again now, it'll start letting me complete the options. So if we were to shorten this down a bit to just C, as you can see, it'll show things like completion, config, and credits. Basically, it'll just make it a bit easier to use the actual program. This is entirely optional. I think that if you're gonna be using it frequently though, setting up the completion script is just gonna make your life way easier. Now that that's out of the way, one of the first things you might want to do is either create a new repo or to clone a repo you already have. Now I'm just going to go into my repos directory just because that's where I like storing my repos. And let's, I guess, clone a repo that we already have. So if we start writing out GH and then tab complete, there's a couple of things we have in here. So completion, config, credits, help, issue, PR, and repo. Now it should be pretty obvious which one we're going to be looking at right now we're gonna look at the repo option. As you can see, it has a nice little description here. So create, clone, fork, and view repos. So if we go GH repo and then complete again, there's a couple of things we have in here. So clone, create, fork, and view. If we wanna create a repo, obviously we're gonna use create, but let's go with the clone option first. Now, the cool thing about this, it's not gonna show you basically the format it needs to be in right now, but if we go help, you can see basically how it works. This I would say is probably the worst bit of documentation in the entirety of the GitHub CLI because it doesn't show you the awesome thing that GitHub CLI can do and that is this right here. 
So unlike regular Git, where you need to give it a link to a repo, what we can do instead is we can actually give it our location on GitHub. So I've just got a repo called test repo, and let's try to clone that. Now it's gonna clone into that, it's managed to find it perfectly fine because that repo already exists. So you don't have to just do this with repos that you own, you can do this with any repo out there. Basically, instead of having to give it a direct link to the repo, you can give it the author name and then the name of the repo. Now, one thing you might have noticed if you are following along with me is when you did that, it's gonna open up a web browser and prompt you to actually sign in with your GitHub account and actually authorize your GitHub account. Just go ahead and give it the permissions to do that because otherwise you won't be able to do things like mess with issues, mess with pull requests. Really, most of the useful stuff this application just won't work. I think you'll still be able to clone, but you could clone with regular Git, so GitHub CLI doesn't really add any functionality there. If we just CD into this repo now, as you'll see, it's a perfectly functional Git repo. Nothing, nothing out of the ordinary there, basically. Let's actually make a new repo though. So if we just go GH repo create, and if you're gonna give it any options, I would recommend doing them now because once you give the repo an actual name, it will actually break the tab completion. So let's just look at the actual options. So there's things like a description, enable issues, enable wiki. You can see the help page for this. The help page obviously isn't an option for the actual repo. We can set a home page. We can set it to be public. We can select to do this on another repo, which doesn't actually make sense really. I'm not sure why this option is actually here. And we can also set a team for this. So let's just enable issues. And also, what was the other one we're gonna do? Let's see what else was there. So let's also make it public. So this one here. And now, as I said, if you try to give it a name, it will actually break the tab completion. This seems to be a bit of a ZSH problem. It might not be a problem in Bash, Fish, or PowerShell, but in ZSH, for whatever reason, it breaks at this point. But the command still works perfectly fine, it just breaks the actual tab completion. So if we just run this now, give it a second to go, and as you'll see, it's gonna prompt me to create a directory locally on my system for this repo. I'm gonna say yes, and if we actually CD into that repo, as you'll see, it's been made as a Git repo, and also, if we go over to my GitHub page now, so let's go to my profile and see if we can find it. So now that I think about it, I could just write it up here, couldn't I? So, as we can see, we've made this repo now. So there's nothing in it, as we would expect, because there is nothing in this actual folder here. But it's a perfectly functioning Git repo, and it's made a remote repo for this local repo as well. And that is one of the really cool things it does. So, obviously, you could go and make the actual Git repo locally on your system with Git, and then you could go over to GitHub and set up a repo there, but doing it like this, it's automatically set up the remote for us. It's automatically set up the local repo for us. It's automatically set up the remote repo. It's set up the link between the two, so you can automatically start pushing and pulling stuff between the two. It's just a little bit of a convenient way to get set up. Now, if that was all it did, I wouldn't be talking about this right now. The reason I'm talking about this is for these two features right here, for issue and for PR. So you can actually create issues in your GitHub repo from the terminal. So let's actually try that out. If we go GH issue, let's see this now. So there's things like close issue, create issue, list issues, reopen status and view. So if we just go list, as we can see, there's currently no open issues, but let's actually create one. Now, what we can do here is go tab complete and there's a bunch of options we have like the assignee, we can set a body, we can set the label, milestone project, all of this stuff here. And we could also just open up the web browser if that's how we'd prefer to work. So if we just give it no options whatsoever, as you'll see, it'll start prompting us for stuff. So let's give it a title. So this is an issue. And if we wanna set a body, we can either press enter to skip or it's gonna to try to open up my editor. By default, it's going to read your editor variable. So in my case, that's gonna be set to NeoVim. So if I just press E, now the nice thing about this is because it's designed to work with GitHub, this is actually Markdown. So we can say this is a header and a bullet, another one and another header. And if we then go and save this, we can now move to the next step. So we can go and submit it here. We can add some metadata or if we want to do the rest of the stuff in the web browser, like it might be easier to do things like assignees in the web browser and things like that, we can actually continue over to that. Now, if we give that a sec, as you can see, it's auto-filled that stuff that I wrote in before. And let's say I wanted to do something like assign it to myself. 
I don't have any project labels or milestones or anything like that, so I can't do anything there, but let's just submit the new issue. So that issue is now submitted, and if we go over here and go issue and then list, as you'll see, we now have one issue. If we go, what do we have, view? So if we go view, we can then say we actually want to look into that issue and see what's actually going on with it. And that'll say the actual description of the actual issue. There is one problem I have with the issues and with the pull request. And that is that you can't actually comment on them. Once it has that, it'll be a really useful tool. That is the one thing that this is missing. If you could comment on the issues, I would without a doubt use this in my daily workflow. And for the most part, you can do most of your stuff. Pretty much the only thing you can't do is actually comment on the issues and on the pull requests. Once that feature is there, I don't actually see a reason to ever go to the GitHub website because I could then just do everything from the terminal. And I feel like that's what a lot of programmers are just gonna do. So let's see what else we could do with those issues. So we can actually go and close that issue. So let's say we want to close issue one. If we go over to the web browser, as you can see, it's automatically updated the page and now this issue is closed. We could then also reopen that issue, one. And as you'll see over here, give it a second, it's now been reopened. So you don't even have to refresh the web page. It's automatically gonna update all of this stuff over here for you, which is also nice. I didn't know GitHub could do that. That's just a nice thing about modern web design, I guess. The pull request command works in a fairly similar way. So let's just go and look at that one. So if we go PR, as you'll see, there's a bunch of stuff in here like we can check out a pull request, close, create, list, reopen, status, and view. I currently have no pull requests on here and I can't actually create one. I was messing with some stuff off camera and I've now put myself in a situation where I can create a pull request. Now, I've done it in a really bad way because what I did was my first commit was actually on my second branch. So now my second branch is actually my main branch and my master branch is now my second branch. Don't set up a repo like this, it was my mistake, but it will work for a pull request. So if we just go GH PR with the create option, and then if we just try to tab complete, as we'll see, there's a bunch of options here, like we can set the assignee, a base, body, draft, fill, all this other stuff here. Now, we're just gonna be running it with no option, and it should try to autofill stuff. Now, the default title it has was file, because that's what the commit message of the one commit on this branch was. Once again, bad commit message, don't actually do that, but let's set it to something like, this is a PR, equally a bad pull request name, but sure, it'll work. And also let's set a body for it. So once again, we can do markdown in here, so we can do things like, this is a heading, I'm not gonna do anything more than that because you kinda get the point. It's markdown, it works like markdown. If we save that now, like when we were setting up an issue, we have things like submit, continue in browser, add metadata, or we can just cancel. Now I'm just gonna submit it and give that a second to go and it's now actually created the pull request. So it gives us a link directly to it so we can click on that and it will take us directly to the pull request. Now I don't know why this is PR2 because that is the first PR being made. Interesting, I don't know how that's actually possible on GitHub. I tried to make a pull request before and then it failed, but it didn't actually make a pull request on the actual GitHub page. So I don't know how that's set to number two. That's interesting, I've, I've literally never seen that happen. So I guess even this can break a little bit. It is beta software, so I can accept that. Now, I would say this is actually a pretty good piece of software. So we can create issues, we can create pull requests, we can just do the general Git stuff working with Git. Now, the benefit of doing this over something like GitHub Desktop, which is a GUI application which will, which will basically let you do all of the Git stuff in one place. I don't really like the fact that it tries to replace Git. I want my Git tools to be Git. I want my GitHub tools to be GitHub tools. I don't want them to try to merge together. I do like that GitHub CLI is a very comfortable tool to use. I don't like that the desktop GUI application tries to basically take over the role of Git. So I'm not a big fan of that one. This tool though, I think fits in a really good place. Now there's obviously a couple of things that are missing. Like you can't do things such as create packages, create releases. You can't mess with your settings of your actual repo. Some of this stuff, I can see why they wanna keep it on the website. Like setting some of the settings, it might make sense to just keep that on the website. Maybe being able to do packages would be nice to be able to do from the actual terminal. Maybe the same with releases, but 
I don't know, maybe it'll come in the future, I'm not really sure what's gonna happen with that. Now there obviously are a few things that are missing, like as I mentioned, you can't do things like commenting on a pull request or on an issue, you also can't do things like make packages, make releases, you can't set your settings, you can't do a lot of security stuff. There's a lot of stuff that is sort of missing. A lot of it I can see why they'd want it to be missing, like setting the settings from the actual CLI tool. It seems like some of it is coming over, I don't know how much of it is. I Yeah, there's, there's obviously that settings section. I don't know if that's more for settings of the tool itself though, or if it's gonna eventually expand to be settings of your actual repo. If it does expand to be that, that would be really cool, but I can see why you'd wanna have things like, I don't know, what's, what's actually in the settings? Things like deleting your repo or making it private, I can see why it would make sense to have those on the website where you know they're working, and then just, if you wanna do that stuff, just come over here and then just go back to your CLI tool when you wanna go back to your CLI tool. But as for things like making comments and maybe even making packages or releases, it might make sense to just have those working from the CLI tool. I don't know if Hubs does that, I haven't actually looked into that tool. But being an official piece of software that's in beta for GitHub, I would say this is a really good option to use. If you weren't using anything before, I don't see the downside of doing this. I'm probably gonna be using this on a daily basis now. I don't typically do things like mess with issues or pull requests, but it is nice to be able to easily set up a repo and just have your remote magically working and have it all linked together perfectly fine. Honestly, that's a good enough reason for me to use it. But if I was working with issues and pull requests a lot, I would probably have no reason whatsoever to recommend anything else, unless Hubs is better. Once again, haven't looked at Hubs, I will be doing that at some point. So when I do, I'll let you know if I think that's better or not. But for now, as I said, if you're not using anything, really there's no harm in using this. It's a very simple tool to learn. Everything is named really sensibly. You'll pick it up in like five minutes, really. So check it out, I guess. So I think that's pretty much everything for me, but before I go, I just want to thank my patrons. So a special thank you to Joachim, Nathan, Andrew, Peter Lee, Road, Tony Donald, Luke, Larry, and Zilva. If you want to join the Patreon, there'll be a link to that down below, as well as my Amazon affiliate links where you can buy the gear I use in this channel, or just anything else you want, and I'll get a small kickback for it. Also remember to go check out my podcast, that is available on Library and YouTube. Also remember that this channel itself is also available on Library, it's also on BitTube as well, so feel free to watch that over there. I think my Library, by the time this goes up, I'll probably be over 7,500 subscribers, which is insane. Thank you. I don't know how that happened, but yeah, I'll probably be over 7,500 by the time this goes up. Also, remember to smash the like button and leave me a comment down below, and remember to subscribe and ding the bell icon down below as well. So I think that's pretty much everything for me, and I'm out.